this year. Let's put you right there. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. me. So the small one also The King of all glory made himself low to be my defender wherever I go. My shield and my refuge, protector and friend, you're always here with me, you're always here. When my heart's under fire, when I'm facing defeat, so close to surrender to my enemies, but love came from heaven to fight for me. When I am defenseless, you climb in the trenches with me. I'll never forget that day when I heard Dear Savior, say, I'll take all your fears away, your troubles and doubts. My feet were on sinking sand, and I knew that I could not stand. Then I felt his precious hand as he lifted me up. He lifted me up. From the deep miry clay, he planted my feet on the heavenly way. I'll tell it wherever I go, for I want the whole world to know. I'm glad that he loved me so, that he lifted me up. If you are away from down the pathway of sin you've trod Let him be your staff and rod He'll turn you about From sin he will set you free And the pathway of life you'll see That's just what he did for me He will lift you right out He lifted me out of the deep miry clay, he planted my feet on the heavenly way. I'll tell it wherever I go, for I want the whole world to know. I'm glad that he loved me so, that he lifted me out. He lifted me out. Of the deep miry clay, he planted my feet on the heavenly way. I'll tell it wherever I go, for I want the whole world to know. I'm glad that he loved me so, that he lived. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we do have a few announcements this morning, and uh, we had noticed that there may be, it may be a mistake. It says at the Lumpkin Count meeting that the last service is tonight at 7.30, so if you're planning on going, just call Stevie or Johnny and ask them, because we're thinking that it was today, that this, this morning service is the last service. So if you're planning on going, just check with them first. And then also notice in here that we have uh, good news at noon. Were there some details? It just says details coming soon. So did you notice any? But like I said, it just says in here for August that good news at noon, details coming soon. So we'll just 
see what you know see what is coming up pretty soon but just watch for it and then also you know we're doing the operation christmas child and uh, so be aware that we've got that that that's going on too and uh, then uh, the other and if y'all notice in here we do have you know like uh, pastor sandy had left us a little a short message uh, you know a thank you note so just you know keep that in mind and then also this coming saturday on august the 6th and uh, between 2 and 4 o'clock in the fellowship hall, we're actually having a meet and greet for our new pastor, for Pastor Emmy. And uh, so anyhow, and uh, so just, you know, that way you can come and meet her before she comes, start, uh, comes on Sunday morning. And uh, there also is an insert in our bulletin that says, uh, you know, to meet the pastor. So it gives us a little bit of a short biography about her. So anyhow, so are there any other announcements, anything else that we're missing? Yes, there's a, uh, the golden group on the back of the bulletin, that's a mistake. I will not be here in the morning at 11. Okay, okay. So, so y'all, there is no golden group. Oh, right. Donna? Yes, Good News at Noon uh, is, we are, being, we are serving at Good News at Noon <coughs> Thursday, the 18th of August. Thursday, the 18th? Thursday. Okay. Some have volunteered already, and we thank you for that. I think we're okay on servers. Okay. And there will be a box back in uh, as you come in the door here for the wish list item. Okay. Okay. So uh, August the 18th, August. and then there is a box for the wish list items that will be there back. Will be. That will be back there. It's not there right now, but there will be one. Okay. So we we'll just keep that in mind. And uh, so, y'all, this morning, our scripture for this morning, if there aren't any other announcements, uh, that was the lectionary was Psalm 107, which is actually another one of my favorite psalms. It says, Psalm 107, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. I mean, that's, you know, God is our deliverer. That's the thing. And I feel like maybe even some of our songs, even our choir song, he set me free. He has set us free. And uh, so anyhow, uh, go on and we'll bow our heads for our uh, pr opening prayer. Lord Jesus, uh, bless uh, our speaker that we have this morning. Uh, Gary Glenn is going to be bringing the message this morning. And just uh, bless him this morning and bless our music. And just let everybody that has been here this morning, anyone that hears that they feel the Holy Spirit, that they feel you just wash through us and they're able to say, I am glad that I came to church this morning. And just and uh, we just know that, that you can do that for that, that you could just uh, wash, your Holy Spirit could just wash through us and let us know that we have been in your house, Lord Jesus, that we came here to serve you today and then help us be able to take that same message out with us throughout the rest of this week. Amen. Amen. And uh,
I'll, uh, now you may be seated. Um, we have our uh, praises, attributes, and blessings. And uh, is there anyone, you know, as Pastor Sandy had done, that have we, has anyone have a word what they want to, what God has been to them this week? Are there any praises? So, anything else? A healer, yes. Strength. Strength, yes. Almighty. Almighty. Present. Present, yes. And I think we felt that, you know, we have had a lot of people, Walt Charlotte, Walt being in the hospital, and so we've had a lot of things that are, you know, and, but then also think about Johnny and Stevie and us going to camp meeting, that he's our sustainer and he fills us up. He wants to fill us up so that we can keep going and so he just he always provides and in Sunday school we had the 23rd Psalm and it was like you know he's there with us that we're helpless and he's there to to guide us and so anyhow so I just feel like it's very appropriate so anyhow um, are there any do we have any uh, prayer requests that we need to any special prayer request Gail Coleman. Gail Coleman and then of course Walt and Charlotte for them Angie Reed. Angie Reed. And uh, so any other special? Update on Sean Olson. He was the young man that was uh, burned uh, badly all over his body. He is now where he can walk. Um, the big breathing part is still going to take place. But he, he now has skin that is actually growing back because they used the ground. So uh, he is doing much better. Sean Olson. So, they uh, know. He was, you were on our list. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for all your prayers and phone calls and the food. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank so, you very much. Yes. Prayers for the people involved in an accident at the entrance to Crest Wing as we just came Oh, you mean like y'all coming to church right now? Two or three cars. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, to lift them up. So, if there aren't any others, Lord Jesus, we do want to lift up our prayers that we do have, you know, that, uh, that you know that we are human and things happen and we break down and make mistakes and just uh, lift up the paramedics and the fire department, the police, the ones that are handling this accident, Lord Jesus, and just be with those people and uh, let them get the best of care and immediate whatever they need, Lord Jesus. And, then we've got, you know, we do also want to lift up Walt and Charlotte, and we've got other ones that we want to lift up that for prayer, and then there could possibly even be some unspoken requests that we haven't thought of at the time, but you know what our needs are, Lord Jesus, that you are the one that is omnipresent. You are omniscient. You know everything about us, Lord Jesus, and just uh, bless our needs, and we do thank you for all you've done. Amen. Once like a bird in prison I dwell No freedom from my sorrow I felt But Jesus came and listened to me And glory to God He set me free He set me free Yes, He set me free He broke the bond
thought you guys might want to sing this with, with us. Everybody know it. Gary, if he need to be introduced or anything, but we, <laughs> Gary Glenn is our speaker today, and I guess if there's something you want to tell us, you can tell us. That's fine. <laughs> so. Well, I appreciate the invitation to come back with y'all. You know, I always enjoy being with you. Is that big? Yeah. My wife found these for the, uh, handles for these Yeti cups, and they're <laughs> really good. Morning, everybody. Oh, that might be Jesus calling. So <laughs> Never know. Um, the reason we're for the mask is uh, my wife and I are just coming off of COVID protocol. I would never have known it had I not gotten tested. And the reason I got tested is we got us a new preacher too. So I spent a good deal of time with him at the leadership council meeting. Then we always do a little bit of advertising on the local football game. So his car was in the shop. So he said, can you come get me and take me to the radio station? And I said, sure. So we had a good chat. I did most of the talking as usual over there and back and but we were we were in that enclosed space together uh, over there and back and uh, he sends me a text the next Wednesday said he tested co uh, positive for COVID I went, okay so then they tell you, you know you got to wait a certain amount of time before you test and so I waited till next uh, this past Sunday morning tested sure enough that little pink line showed up and I went, oh man and then Jill tested and of course uh, she was positive too. Cause, I mean, after all, she is my wife, and we've been together for forty-something years, and we live in the same house together. And, and anyway, so we, we're just coming off of all of that. And they tell you you're okay now. You know, wear a mask if you're in public and close to people. Once you've gone through the five days, so this is like like if you count last Sunday, this is actually the eighth day. So I think I'm all right. We all just y'all, but but, but I'm, I'm not going to hug you or, or you get in your face or anything like that. We'll just be sure. It, it, by way of introduction, I never know how people know me. You know, because I've been in the media, radio, and television for quite a number of years. And then I was in the educational system. I was Coach Glenn. I was actually Professor Glenn at Bernal, adjunct professor at Bernal, for a few years. And, uh, and, and now I still substitute in, in, the, in the school system. So I had a guy met me at a convenience store one time and said, you're Gary Glenn. I said, I am. He said, oh, George Iron Dogs. He knew me from the weightlifting. And then I was, <clears throat> I remember I was doing, when I was working for Jacobs Media, I had gone over here to the college. At the time, it was Gainesville College. And some, some of you may remember that they used to have a little exercise area down there adjacent to the track where you could do chin-ups and dips and stuff and sit-ups. And I was in there, I'm doing some sit-ups. This guy comes riding up to me on one of those great big old lawnmowers. You know, the kind you can cut about three acres at once. And he comes up there and he looks down and he goes, you're Gary Glenn, ain't you? And I said, I am. He said, yeah, I listen to you every day on Swap Shop. And I went, out of all the things I have done in my life, this man knows me from Swap Shop. And God bless him for knowing me from Swap Shop. But it is a pleasure to be back with you. And uh, you've noticed that when I speak to you, I, I guess it's my training as a journalist because I appeal to authority a lot. Uh, that was the way I was trained. I think more journalists need to be trained in that way now to appeal to authority and get the source and quote sources and things like that. I see a lot of things now. One quick editorial comment, and then I'll let it lie. Things now are passed as news when they're just opinion. Okay. Uh, and, of course, as Christians, our ultimate authority is the Bible. So I quote a lot from the Bible, and I use a lot of Scripture. Now, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to read from the NIV, which I've, I've got printed out here for me. But in yours, in your, uh, in your bulletin, is from the New Revised Standard Version. But they're very, very simple. So attend now the reading of the Word. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Don't you like that image? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. 
God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. And then a Psalm of David from Psalm 19, first four verses. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. From Psalm 24, lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is he, this king of glory? The Lord almighty, he is the king of glory. Another Psalm of David, Psalm 63. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. And then from Luke, a very familiar passage. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Well, as you know, Hallmark has been running their Christmas in July movies. So that last bit of scripture might be seen as an homage to that, but it really fits well with our theme today of giving God the glory. I actually watched one of those movies last night. It was pretty good. You know Hallmark movies. You, you know they're going to end well. I like happy endings. What can I say? I'm a romanticist. Now, this is not going to be a sermon on, on science versus faith and religion. I, I personally think the two complement each other quite well. You see, science seeks to answer the questions of how. Faith deals more with the why. Whether you say, let there be light, or the Big Bang Theory, or the actual theory, not the hilarious television show, most everyone must agree that something happened in the time that was before time. How do we know that? Because here we are. Even those who profess no belief at all must concede that somehow something started it all up. For the believer, that first cause is God. In a universe a little shy, according to the latest data that I could find, the universe is shy of about 14 billion years old. Now, they figure that out with a variety of space-time measurements, and I'm not going to go into all that. But within that universe, here we sit, third rock from a star, about 93 million miles away. If you learn nothing else this morning, you learn the sun and the earth are about 93 million miles apart, give or take a few hundred thousand miles. It takes light about 8 minutes and 19 seconds to travel here from old Saul. Which means that when you see the sun in the sky, you're really looking a little over eight minutes into the past. Because it takes that long for the photons of light to get here. That's a cool concept when you think about it. You're looking in the past. Kind of time travel, isn't it, huh? Now the closest star to us other than our sun is about 4.24 light years or about 25 trillion miles away. That light left its star almost four and a quarter years ago. Between us and that, yeah, pretty much nothing. Now our, our telescopes and our instruments are so much better now that we can actually see more stuff in the night sky. And we know now that there are more stars than we once thought. In our galaxy, the Milky Way, there are about 400 billion stars. There are an estimated two trillion galaxies in the known universe with an aggregate total of 200 billion trillion or 200 sextillion stars. Now that's a two followed by 23 zeros, by the way. Your head's starting to hurt a little bit? Yeah. Let there be light indeed. And he saw that it was very good. Glory be to God. The eminent astronomer, astronomer, eminent astronomer Carl Sagan said, for small creatures such as we, the vastness is bearable only through love. I like that quote. Now these distances and numbers you see are so vast. 
they're incomprehensible to mortal folk. In fact, if you tried to count to a trillion, if you tried just to count to a trillion, one, two, three, four, five, if you, if you really hurried it up, you could get there in about 33,000 years. We give glory to God because all of that was brought into his existence, into his realm at his behest. Let there be light. Wow. Said the psalmist, in the heavens God pitched a tent for the sun and for the moon and the stars and it all works like clockwork. In fact, the watch and the watchmaker analogy is one of the things studied in philosophy of religion to prove the existence of God. For example, if you walk through a field and you see a rock, you think nothing of it. It's just a rock, right? But if you walk through that same field and you look down and you see a watch, you pick it up and say, oh, look, somebody lost a watch. You see the intricacy of the movement of the hands and the numbers and know that somebody designed that and made that. It was crafted with thought and care. The universe is a dance of creation, intricately governed by the laws of physics and gravity and space-time. Here on our little world, the balance of gravity is achieved so that we are neither sucked down to the center of the earth or go flying off into space. Our world orbits our star in much the same fashion. We're not pulled into the sun, nor do we break loose and wander in the cold and the dark. We give glory to God and we worship Him because He is the only thing worthy of that. Amen? We should not give our devotion to any created thing, only to the Creator. Amen? Amen. And two, we do not give our devotion and worship and give honor and glory to God because He's some vast narcissistic being like the gods of myth and, and legend which craves attention. You read all those old stories, haven't you? God's not like that. He does not need to be told how great he is. Don't you think he knows? So what does God need? What would you bring as a present to God? Well, that'd be worse than trying to figure out what to give Elon Musk, right? <laughs> he can get by what he wants to. God needs us to love one another and be faithful to him and what he told us to do because he loves us and wants what's best for us. We are beings made in his image after all. Now what does that mean? Well, from Psalm 8, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them, You've made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. Did, did you get that? God willingly gives up some of his power and glory to bestow it upon us, his created children. Crowned with glory and honor, it says. Psalm 139 adds, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. With all of our science and all of our bells and whistles and all of our gigaws and gadgets, have we made life? No, we have not. And we also managed to mess up that role as caretakers of creation pretty royally. We were created to be his stewards on this planet. We are made in his image, thinking, creative, reasoning beings with the knowledge of good and evil, right and wrong. We are beings of free will with the ability to choose. In recent days, horrific acts of violence have been perpetrated. A deadly war continues to rage in the Ukraine. I tell you nothing you do not already know. All of that is part of the blessing and curse of humanity. That troublesome thing called free will. We can listen to and give glory to Almighty God. We can listen to and follow the heavenly Prince of Peace, or we can listen to and follow the Prince of another realm entirely. 
People search for motive in some of these things when the truth is sometimes quite simple. You are motivated by and follow those to whom and what you choose to listen to, good and evil. It's up to us. Lay down with dogs and you get up with fleas, my daddy said. You ride with the devil and he wants to drive. God willingly gives up some of his power and glory to us every moment that we are alive. What an awesome and quite frankly frightening responsibility. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but what? That the world through him might be saved. Amen. We gather in this place today, <clears throat> in this sanctuary, because God's glory is revealed in the sanctuary. We just read that, didn't we? It's also revealed in all of creation. But if you're on the lake on Sunday morning, you may be more about the boat, the bass, and the bud light than you are about God. Now, I'm not saying that's always the case, but we have to be careful. So we gather here in corporate worship. We welcome the folks online. You're part of this corporate worship. Our Father, who art in heaven. Our Father. We who desire to serve Him as part of the body of Christ, no matter what are our gifts and graces, no matter what race, ethnicity, or gender, or economic status, or any of the other things that people use to seek to separate us rather than pull us closer together. We are part of the body of Christ, and I'm doing my best to get out of the judgment business. Because in the end, I don't get a vote, and you don't either. We give glory to God, brothers and sisters, because it is good for us. Human beings are born selfish. Think about it. The most selfish thing in the world is a human infant. It's all about me. All about me. Hold me. Feed me. Change me. Love me. Sadly, <laughs> some people never grow out of that. And they remain children all of their lives, and it continues to be all about me. You see, they never followed the Apostle Paul's advice. That 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians gets a lot of attention for its passages on the nature of love, and, and rightly so, rightly so. However, there are other nuggets of vast wisdom in that thing, and one of them is the passage about growing up. You know the part where Paul says that when he was a little kid, he did little kid stuff. Now that he's a grown up, he put all that kid stuff behind him, and now he acts like a grown up. Oh, this is Gary's translation. May God put more grown-ups in charge. And may we all quit acting like a bunch of spoiled children when we don't get our way. We give glory to God because it's good for us. It reminds us that there is something that is bigger and better than ourselves. That we should aspire to emulate. Our being longs for that, the Scripture says. We all have people in our lives that we looked up to, that we wanted to be more like, because we thought it would make us better. I still find myself quoting things or using techniques of people that I, I admired, an old coach, a mentor in the TV business, because I thought they were wise people. And maybe because of, of all of that, we have our own moments of individual glory. Jill and I sure are having fun watching our grandsons play ball. I will tell you that. There's some moments of glory there. And there are some moments of disappointment there. Well, that's life. No? Huh? And that's okay. But the one we worship and give ultimate glory to is Almighty God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The awesome three in one. What the scripture calls the King of Glory. From the Gospel of John, 6th chapter, verses 68 and 69. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know 
that you are the Holy One of God. The book of Revelation is filled with a lot of strange imagery, you know, those beasts and stuff. But the overarching message is of the power and glory and majesty of God. And the Lamb that was slain but is alive now and forevermore. By, by the way, let me, let me save you a whole lot of worry about the, about the meaning of the book of Revelation. God wins. God wins. By giving that honor, love, and respect to our Heavenly Father. We cultivate an attitude and desire that will enable all of those around us to be blessed as we seek to do His will. Loving God and loving neighbor, after all, are the greatest commandments. You see, and that puts that awesome responsibility squarely back on us, doesn't it? Huh? That awesome responsibility of sharing in the power and the glory of Almighty God is put back on us. His servants and his children. We see the glory of God in the immeasurable immensity of the cosmos that I talked about, and in the majesty of those purple mountains, and in the vastness of the restless oceans. But we also see the glory of God in the budding of a single daylily, in the song of a bird, in the laughter of little children, in the eyes of wisdom in our elders, and a well hit ball by a child or grandchild. or in the simple pleasure of a quiet and gentle touch and loving act. And we see his glory and the love shining in the eyes of family and friends. How great thou art indeed. God is God of both the mighty and the mundane, of the large and the small. He knows you and me just as well as he knows the orbits of the planets and the stars. So on this day and every day, let us proclaim glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill to all. Glory, hallelujah, and amen. Our closing hymn is Rock of Ages, cleft for me, very old, familiar, standard of the church. If you are able, please stand for that and remain standing for the benediction. Fourth, let us remember those that are still being plagued by COVID, including the president again. And also, let's be in prayer for our teachers and our students as the kids get ready to go back to class, especially pray for the teachers.
Receive now the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for coming.